if you ever find this bourbon and it's not $500, buy it. What's up guys, welcome back. This is Bourbon in the House. My name is Tristan, review number 20, and that is the 2020 Four Roses limited edition small batch. And there really is no words to describe these bourbons, but I'm going to try and think of a few. What I mean by a few is there's actually a lot because this is consistently the best bourbon I have each year. Usually these are some of the best bourbons I've ever had. And this one is no exception. I've reviewed the 2018, of course, uh, many other single barrels. And this is one that I thought for Memorial Day would be very fitting because it is just an exceptional, exceptional American whiskey. Often one that's overlooked though. It's commonly overshadowed by the Pappy Van Winkles, the BTAC, the Willits, of course, uh, you know, all the, all the panache of the American whiskey gamut usually it overshadows this old forester birthday bourbon so on and so forth this one i actually found last year for msrp at an andronico's which is kind of a nice safe way and so i found it for around 150 which was an absolute no-brainer um, i immediately picked it up because it's very very rare to find them for that price range if you ever find this bourbon and it's not 500 dollars buy it. I say that kind of tongue in cheek because uh, you shouldn't spend anywhere around $500 for this. That being said, it probably will be the best bourbon you've had all year, especially if you are into high rye bourbons. Don't spend around $500. Um, I would spend no more than 200, mostly based on principle because I've had so many vintages of this. But if you do find this bourbon, do not pass it up. I would, I would recommend, especially if you've had a lot of the Pappy Van Winkles and you have the option between this and a Pappy, but you've never had one of these, definitely, definitely pull the trigger on this. It will not disappoint you. So that being said, the 2020 Four Roses Limited Edition Small Batch is a batching of four recipes. This year, they actually did not put them on the back of the bottle, so I had to look them up, but they are the OBSV and OESV both that are 12 years old. There's a 16 year old OESK and a 19 year old OBSK, which is very old for Four Roses. Most of their releases are well under, well under 20 years old. And they're usually at the oldest around 15, 16. So for this to have a 19 is definitely older. And much of the mash bills in this actually are the high rye but still technically it's half and half i've gone into the mash bills and recipes before so i'm not going to get into that now basically ob is their high rye mash bill oe is their low rye mash bill and so each year for the limited edition small batch they do a different batching so each vintage is different always bottled at cast strength of course non-chill filtered and as always no coloring being bourbon very similar to this, which is the standard Four Roses small batch, which you can find in many stores, which is a phenomenal bourbon for about mid thirties to forties. And so think of, if you like this, you will definitely like this. A cast strength version, definitely older and always different mash bills, different recipes from there, a very extravagant, um, plethora of said recipes and mash bills. So being between 12 and 19 years old, it's technically a 12 year old bourbon, but it definitely has a lot of depth with that 19 year old. This is what it's all about. This is also bottle number 3,769 out of 14,040. They only release about I would say two thirds of that to the United States. And then the rest is usually what goes to the foreign markets, mostly UK, Japan, a few other countries. Uh, most of this does make it here, but again, 14,000 bottles may sound like a lot, but that really is not that many bottles if you think about it, especially how much they push out every year in terms of liters, like 
what the average American distillery pushes out, or at least one of the big six or seven, should I say, Jim Beam, Wild Turkey, Four Roses, uh, they, they push out a lot of bourbon. So 14,000 bottles really is not a lot in terms of a global release. Again, cast strength. Sorry, I forgot to mention. 55.7%. So that's 111.4 proof if my math is correct. <laughs> Definitely give this some time in the glass as you pour it because this will stun your nose. It is cast strength. As with all cast strength whiskeys, you should give it a little bit of time to breathe. However, with bourbons, they can just be very, very intense. So you don't want to stun your nose. Definitely give it some time. Decadent and bombastic would be the best two words to describe this. Yeah. I mean, as aromatic as a bourbon nose can get. Every petal on every rose is as elegant as ever. Rye grains are so rich, vivid. Rye is really what defines four roses. And again, high rye bourbon, so they don't do weeded bourbons at all. I think the antithesis of a weeded bourbon like a Weller or a Van Winkle. I mean, the rye is so vivid, you can just smell it like you're holding the grains in your hand. I mean, the sweet notes, there's shaved coconut, cashew shells, cacao dust, burnt sugar, creme brulee, uh, like uh, almost like a burnt um, muscovado sugar, heaps of confectioner's caramel, vanilla oil, custard. And then after that sweetness, you get the orchard fruits, bursting ripe orchard fruits. Freshly sliced strawberries, tangerines, blood oranges, just a plethora of all orange varietals. Like you're smelling them in a crate. Grape soda, which is really interesting. That is a note you sometimes get with bourbons that have been aged well above the 10 year mark. Literal juice elements to this. The oak backbone, however, it almost perfectly balances out the sweetness in the orchard fruit. It's that, it's that just underlying thing that keeps everything in check. When people say that this whiskey is very balanced or very smooth, I generally find that very off-putting when people say that because if everything's balanced, then nothing really sticks out. And in my opinion, who wants to drink something that doesn't stick out or that's just average? If everything was balanced and everything was smooth, then everyone would make the same kind of whiskey. Everything would taste the same, if that makes sense. So as much as I don't want to say it's balanced, there's it really is all three of those elements, the sweetness, the orchard fruits, the oak. It's like this perfect trifecta. Yeah, and it's just those rye grains that define Four Roses. They're symphonic. It's just an absolute orchestra of a bourbon. Absolute magnificence. I mean, it's a masterpiece of a nose. If you ever get to see this in a bar or a restaurant and can't get a hold of a bottle, definitely buy a glass, even if it's 20 or $30, just to say, you've tried it. I mean, you will know how much of an, of an exceptional experience this is. And the palette. Incredible and breathtaking. Every candied citrus peel you can think of. Beautiful oils. The rye is so bright, so vivacious and defined. Gummy bears, candied cherries, more oranges from the nose. Now some apple even, like red apple. The grape soda is now morphs into more of like a Coca-Cola, charred 92% Peruvian chocolate, like dark Peruvian chocolate. Anything above 90%, if you ever had that, with very little sugar in it, it's been f charred. You get that, that aftertaste. There's some white chocolate, there's some mocha, but the American oak, again, bombastic. It, it's just, it doesn't overwhelm, but it goes right to that edge. Absolutely, absolutely just phenomenal palate. Let's give it one more sip. Long, bold, unrelenting. It could be the longest finish I've ever had in a bourbon and possibly even a whiskey. Fudge, black coffee, milk chocolate, black peppercorns, flamed Madagascan vanilla bean. The oak goes into like a chewiness, although that would be literally unpleasant to chew on oak. It's just, it overwhelms in a good way, the back palate, which is just kind of like people who like heavily tannic Cabernet Sauvignons. You look for those tannins and you just, you salivate at them. That's how I feel what oak is to bourbon. I mean, just the oak is just intense and so, so beautiful. 
There's some cherry old fashioned candies, which I often get with Four Roses bourbons, like those real hard candies you get that you can't really find in most stores, but like the real boutique stores. From a sun drenched orchard to the inside of a warm candy shop, this bourbon takes you just to all these nostalgic places and relatable places too. Uh, it it's, reminds me of Christmas, especially being such a decadent bourbon. Uh, this is just a nostalgic experience. It's a it's a experience to behold. If you can uh, appreciate bourbon, you will love this bourbon, especially if you like high rye bourbons. It's everything a bourbon can be. Uh, just bombastically elegant to the very end. I'm rating this out as my second highest rated bourbon ever. Only to the 2015 Four Roses Limited Edition Small Batch, which is my favorite bourbon I've ever had. And I mean, it's, I thought this may actually have overturned that, but for nostalgic purposes, I'm going to put this second and rate this out at a 98, which is a very, very high mark. But this bourbon deserves it because this is one of the best bourbons, in my opinion, that comes out every single year. Again, if you can find this bourbon for anywhere under $500, I don't want to say that anymore. If you can find it anywhere under $250, I would highly recommend buying this bourbon. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to all those who have served. And I hope you're sipping something very elegant. Cheers, guys.